What's up everyone, ODC, that's me here, and I'm back with another action figure review. Today's review, we're going to take a look at the G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra Mantis Attack Craft with Aqua Viper Officer, which is actually just a lamprey. <laughs> Repainted lamprey from, I believe, he might have some different parts on him. I'm going to double check with my lamprey, but I'm pretty sure this is just a re-release from the 25th anniversary slash uh, Attack on Cobra Island um, I believe it's a, a multi-pack. But the real reason why I picked this up was actually for the Mantis Attack Craft. I believe when this was originally released, it went for around $10 to $11. Uh, might have been less. I'm not 100% sure on that. But uh, now this thing goes upward of $20 to $30. Um, I've even seen some going for $40, which I think is completely ridiculous, uh, if you ask me. This was a, actually a re-release... Um, but, uh, I actually like this, this, uh, packaging. It comes with a better figure, I think, uh, more updated figure. So I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, the packaging itself looks really good. Really am a big fan of the Rise of Cobra line and, uh, 30th anniversary line and Pursuit of Cobra, all of the, uh, more modern stuff after the 25th line. Um, on the side here, we just have some random, you know, kind of promotional stuff for the movie. On the back, we have the majority of the aesthetics as far as that goes. It gives a nice little read-up. If you guys want to pause that and read it, you can. And then there's some more kind of, like I said, uh, visual aesthetics here as to what the figure and the sub slash craft, I'll just call it a craft, uh, looks like and I'll get into why I call it a craft and not really a sub for the most part the um, it Gives you the little opening cockpit. It gives you the little you know firing missiles um, Also the working capture claw, which is pretty cool On the other side we have a picture of the of the uh, vehicle with the figure inside and let's not waste any more time let's open it up and crack get it crack a lacking get it crack a lack it -a -a all right open it up here nothing like getting a fresh gi joe oh boy there's shit falling out all over the place fresh gi joe vehicle nothing like it nothing like it i will show the blueprints for it, if I can snip all this stuff off. Okay, cover your ears, because here comes some plastic cracking. Oh wait, let me get these silly string things off. Just cut these. There we go. Oh, that actually wasn't too loud and obnoxious. I don't know what it is about plastic crackling. It just, ugh, ugh. I hate the sound. Alright, got the lamp ray here. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. I like the face sculpt. Might reuse this for somebody else. There we go with him down here. Let's get this situated here. Okay. Now we will have a bag of goodies here too. Bloop. And we have my favorite things in the world, twist eyes. <laughs> AKA not my favorite things in the world. My least favorite things in the world, twist ties. Especially when it comes to a Marvel Select. Oh my god, Marvel Select with your damn twist ties. Drive me up a friggin' wall. Friggin' frackin' wall. There we go, it's out. Throw that crap over there with the rest of the crap. Alright, now we gotta get these off. Oh boy, they really went overboard with this. This was completely unnecessary to do this. Wrapping this, it's like someone at the factory is like, Haha, watch this, I'm gonna piss someone off when they open this up. Oh, I hate having fucking fat fingers and no nails. 
sorry for swearing, but Jesus, fucking hell. There we go. God, that's annoying. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna t leave this the way it is coming out of packaging. There's all the accessories. Here's the blueprints. We even have that, which I'll get to. I'm just gonna kind of throw that around there. I'm gonna prop this up. Kapow. How you like me now? There we go. Okay. First thing we're gonna get to is we're gonna slide this to the side. We're gonna slide that over there. I'm gonna take a look at those. Take a look at the figure first. We'll get to the coup de gras in a minute. Which is the oh, sorry there, bud. Move you up so you're centered. Uh, we got this little promotional thing. I don't care. I've already ripped it, and I don't care. I've seen this a billion times. It just tells you the other, the other stuff in the line. Pretty cool little diorama scene here between Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes. Don't care. Okay, bye. Um, on to the stickers it comes with comes with some where's my pointer here here we go comes with some indicators some yellow indicators right here more yellow indicators comes with the number serial number for the side it comes with some um if we can get this to focus today come on there we go comes with some some digital displays right there a couple more indicators and cobra symbols so pretty cool i'm gonna put all that stuff on so bear with me here as i get to this, which I need to start taking pictures and posting this on my Facebook page so everyone has something to look at in case they're looking for blueprints, which I have a whole folder full. But here, is, here are the uh, Mantis Attack Craft. There are the blueprints in case you need to check those out. And here are the, uh, what you're going to do first, attach the uh, tail section, attach the turbines to the vehicle, and then side wings out to reveal launchers inside, or insert a missile into each launcher, press the button to fire, manually open, grabber claw, press the button to close. Pretty simplistic stuff, I just wanted to kind of show this off because I know most Joe collectors like to see that. So there you go. I'm not going to waste any more time with that silliness. Let's open up our little bag of goodies here. Okay, that's annoying me already, so let's cut it open. Okay. Very impatient today. All right, comes with his helmet. That'll be his new name, Helmut. He's German. Don't judge him. And there you have a red lamprey. Pretty simple. Get his helmet down on his head. That looks ridiculous. Nope, it's not wanting to... Okay. <laughs> Come on, get down on the head. Get down on the bloody head. That was a horrible English accent. I don't know what that was. All right, then we got his little backpack here with some tubes. Actually, I'm going to take this helmet back off, and we are going to insert this tube here. Usually what I do is I like to glue this stuff just becomes, because it becomes a kind of a pain in the rear end to get this stuff to stay in as it already popped out already, as you can see right there. So we're going to eventually glue this stuff in. Then got to have uh, super glue at my disposal right here. That's what's going to occur. Oh boy, here we go. G.I. Joe issues. Okay. Maybe you might want to pop the helmet on and then work with these. But there you go. That's him with his attachments. I don't like the way this helmet sits. It sits stupid on his face. I want it to go further down but it's not doing that over his chin. So he looks like a buffoon with a crooked helmet. Stop it. Stop it! Anyway, there is Lamprey. Let's see if we can get him to... Could you stand? Could you stand? Could you stand? He also comes with the um, original Lamprey 
submachine gun. And you can see it's very World War II-esque, I would say, with the side-mounted ammunition. Just get that popped in his hand. You can just hold it for everyone to see. He's in pretty much of a horrible generic pose right now, but who cares? <sighs> okay. Next up, there's Lamprey. So the rest of pe the rest of the pieces that we have are we have some, we had four missiles here, and we're just gonna move Lamprey back and to the left, back and to the left, back and to the left. Okay. So we have our four missiles right here, and those will be used later. So we'll just put those over, back into the rat, back into the rat. And we have a, what seems to be a tail section for the Mantis attack craft. And now bringing in said craft, the coup de gras. We have it in pieces here. Here's one of the turbines. There's the other turbine that already comes attached. So we're just going to simply bob a ganoush, attach the douche. And then we're going to take the tail section here. And we're simply going to attach it like so. And one, two, three, let's go. Yes, that just happened. That just happened. And uh, opening up the cockpit, you actually do have quite a bit of room in there, which is really nice. Uh, we are going to, oh, let's get that down. Okay, there we go. Uh, we are going to use this for a specific character and not him. So I already have this signed, sealed, and delivered to go to someone else. Now, when I was referring to the Mantis attack craft, and I think what, what they were going for too is that this is also a, uh, not only is it a submersible unit, but I like to think of this as quite aerodynamic, and especially with these turbines here, could it not only be used for underwater, but also in the air. So it's got multi-functions is what I like to think of with this and it does have wheels on the bottom so what does that tell you it has landing capabilities as well now it's not the most dynamic landing gears that you'll ever see but they do have landing gears nonetheless so what i like to think of is that this is a multifunctional aircraft kind of like a james bond old school like james bond car that would be a submersible i believe it was a Huh, what was that? Was that a Lamborghini that did that? I believe it was. It was either a Lamborghini or an Aston Martin that did that in one of the Bond films. I can't remember. Someone let me know in the comments below, please, as my brain farting. Now, what you want to do is you want to take one of those. Whoa, 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 that's not fitting right. You want to, let's see, how do we want to fit this? Possibly, uh, well, that's why there's instructions, dummy. Okay. Let's go to the instructions and take a look a look a look a look a look a look a oh, okay they kind of sit seat inside do you really want to just kind of I guess push no is that it no yes no it's not wanting to seat oh yeah but <laughs> burr but der don't do what I just did and force things into a hole that obviously is not going to fit and that's why you read instructions and you don't do what ODC just did <laughs> you want to slide these open which is I think even cooler that it does that by the way I'm already loving this thing 100% it flies open you want to take your missile and you want to attach it in take your other missile and attach it in ba -boop, ba -boop, ba -doop. and look at that look how cool that looks Looks nice and hidden. And then when this thing wants to get angry or PO'd, it opens up, fires, and you have two little uh, little uh, firing mechanisms right there. Where you just press these down, and they do fire, which I'll show you in a minute. But when you close them, they're nice and hidden. Um, over in the front here, we do have two, what looks to be like two guns that are actually molded into the front here. I like to think of these as like maybe some sort of high 
high powered um, high powered uh, machine gun some sort for the aircraft to kind of uh, defend itself or go into attack mode. It's not the best sculpted guns, but they do look like guns nonetheless. Now, some people might say, oh, maybe those are headlights. You could go with that, but I like to think of them as guns, seeing as we do have a little bit of what looks to be a barrel sculpted right into the front there. So that could also be the case. And if you wanted to say that those are just headlights so you can see, you could also go that route as well. I like to think of them as guns. So... Underneath, uh, we do have a uh, decent sculpt. Uh, it's kind of plain, nothing too crazy. You do see some marbleization in the plastic right here. Um, but I actually like the durability of this plastic. It feels nice, good, nice, good weight to it. It doesn't feel like if I drop this down a flight of stairs, which I won't, um, but if I happen to, if life got in the way and it happened to fall down a flight of stairs, it feels like it would definitely not break or fall apart or anything like that. It feels nice and sturdy, thick, but also durable. Um, over in the back portion here on the tail, we do have some sliding rear guns, so we do have defense capabilities as well. That's, I think this is really why this makes this aircraft just so, or this craft so nicely done, is that a lot of thought and appreciation was put into the offensive measures and the defensive measures as far as this aircraft goes, or I should just say craft goes. Um, and it can swivel at a full 360 rotation, which is nice. Um, so that's really well done for the tail section. Now, the um, this these spindles here, I believe they can rotate towards the back. And this way, these little propellers in here actually do spin on their own, too, which is really nice. I am liking that. Let's use our pointer here so we don't have our fingers getting in the way. And then on the other side as well. So that's really cool. I really do like that. Flipping it back around to the front, we just have some um, solid covers here for the spindles nice molded plastic. The fins are articulated and they can go up to save you some space. Maybe this is their its landing mode, which is pretty cool. You can, uh, let's see if this will go down. No, this one doesn't want to go down. It's because this one's separate. It, uh, these will not spin down. Uh, this one will, but it won't sit properly, but this one will not spin all the way down. I don't suggest you force it because you might snap it off. So with that, this would just be your landing mode. Like so. Now the reason why I think, and I, I think this is intended, um, but if it wasn't intended I think it was a smart thing to do. Um, let's put our flaps back down. Um, this is what I think of as underwater mode as far as that goes. Now, the reason why I think that is because you have these turbines back here. And these look like underwater turbines. So when you're going underwater, these would flip up. These turbines up here would flip up because you're not in air mode anymore. And then you would have your turbines down here, your kind of motors down here kind of take over and therefore you'd get the underwater. I wouldn't make that noise, but you know, underwater. <laughs> so there's that. It's also aerodynamic in the way of it would be slicing through water, like a shark or a manta, slicing through water. So beautifully done. I really like that. Um, pretty cool. I like that a lot, actually. What does this button do here? This is why I need to read the instructions here. <laughs> ah, so you, what you want to do is, I was actually, I was guessing there would have been some sort of maybe pull lever here. Because most older G.I. Joe vehicles usually have like some sort of pull lever where you would pull this back maybe and this would open up the teeth. But they made it a little bit more simpler for you. And you just press this button and it'll grab onto a figure. 
and then you simply just want to pull these open to have it open, maybe when it's underwater. And we'll just grab. No, we don't want to grab him. Uh, we'll just grab Lamp right here. He'll be our dummy. Dummy, yeah. And what you want to do is you want to put him in there and then have him grab it. It does grab a figure nicely. So you have that feature. That's pretty cool. And then simply just open this back up and it'll release him. So that's nice. You also have some extra missiles here that you can just hold on to. Maybe put these in a baggie, which is what I do right away. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get to some stickers here. And we will be moving on. Uh, let me see where the sticker placement is. You can put them anywhere you want. I usually like putting them where they're supposed to go because usually they look pretty good where they're supposed to go anyway. So we'll go with the Cobra symbols first. And then I'll get to what character I think this fits the best for, just in case you happen to have said character. These stickers are a little bit losing the goo. All right, so we want to put this about right here. It's because this is such an older figure. I might have to get some uh, extra stickers here so this doesn't look wonky. And put the other one up here, like so. And there you go. You've got your Cobra stickers on there giving off the Cobra insignia and that is the proper way to put them. You do have, now you want to open up your canopy here and you can take it off if you want it just pegs right back in no big deal there with that. What you want to do is, I might have to do this off camera here because I don't know if I'll be able to reach over the camera and then now what you want to do with these as the instructions say this goes in the middle then you have this one with kind of like the plain look logo right there. That one goes to the right. And this one goes to the left. Just so you know. And boy, oh boy, are these stickers old. Not as old as some other figure, uh, action figure vehicle stickers. But old enough to actually feel a little bit cheaper, to be honest with you. All right, so we want to lift this up and kind of put this right here as straight as possible. And you definitely want to use some tweezers. That's a little bit crooked, but not that little bit. Let me get that off. <laughs> Couldn't see what I was doing. Not the best, but it'll work. Not a big fan of stickers anyway. Kind of wish that we already had this stuff installed into the vehicle but it gives you a little bit extra customization in case you want to put these in a different way than it says come on you there we go that one so if you want to put these stickers in your own way you have that capability to do that whereas otherwise it would be already pre-installed for you so you couldn't do that so there's a little bit of options for you all right pretty cool we have our stickers in there they look pretty good pretty happy with it looks nice nice little added bonus detail for the aircraft on the sides of the turbines let's flip these the way they're supposed to go which is back for a second and you want to have these facing right here I don't know how well these are going to sit since they're kind of on an angle but they are small and they are circular and that is kind of rounded so we'll try our best to get this angled properly one side, flip it around to the other. Oh, the whole thing's coming off. Come on, come on, you little jerk. There we go. There we 
go. I like to kind of press it down, hold it. So there you go with that insignia on each side. That looks good. I like the uh, overall colors of this. Next, we're going to do our our um, number serial numbers uh, identifications on the set. Come on, come on, you little jerk! Oh God, that is not the way you're supposed to do that. Oh boy. Well, these stickers are so old. They're actually coming apart, falling apart here on me. That's not, that's no bueno. That is a no bueno right there. And we're just going to simply do that and put it on the side right there. So there you go, logo on that side. You don't have to necessarily put these stickers on. So some stickers actually in the past, I don't even put them on. Because I feel like if you're putting too much on there, you don't want to get noticed too quickly, do you? So I think the yellow ones I might save for another time, but uh, I'm not going to put all this yellow stuff on there. Um, I did show the blueprints where you can put them, but I don't want to waste too much time there. So we're going to put our canopy on. I'm pretty happy with the stickers that they came with. I don't like the way this sticker came out. It just did not look well. Uh, if you did want to see how the lamprey fits in here, I will go through that in case you you prefer the lamprey. And he does sit in there. Nice. And you can actually put his gun in there too. Let's get that in there. Let's close the... Oh. Come on. There we go. You kind of have to lean him back a little bit. There we go. And he fits. So there's the lamprey inside. But we're going to take him out of here. You know what, sir? You've been demoted. Sir, you have been demoted. This is not meant for you, even though you think it is. Let's get that out of there. I'm going to go through articulation with the figure in a second. If you really want to see that, I will. But this one is going to someone special. I think this looks good with guillotine. I think it works well. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. You don't necessarily have to have just a vehicle driver. You can give your vehicles to a special character if you want. And I think that this special character should have his own special vehicle. There's another special character that I really do hold dearly that I, I think I'm going to give a special aircraft to, but that'll be in a future video. So for a different time, I'm not going to get into that. Just kind of you know, planting seeds for future videos. But anyway, I think Guillotine would fit in this nicely. So let's see if he will fit in this nicely. And we're going to put all of his accessories in there as well. Let's get that kind of popped up. Get this gun out of his hand. Get this sword out of his back pack. And we'll put his... Actually, let's put the figure in there first before we start doing things that we shouldn't be doing. Hopefully Guillotine fits in there. Get his hands around and fit him in there. I might have to take his backpack off. I don't know. Uh, I might have to bend his knees a little bit. See if that fits. And no, it's not. Helmet's getting in the way a little bit. So you want to bend his knees just a hair. And come on. Come on, little guillotine. Lay down a little bit. There we go. Let's get his hands on that control. And we'll put his gun in there. And we'll put his big old sword in there and come on come on come on fit in there oh, yep. oh, this helmet's getting in the way there we go let's do that we'll do that and no nope, still not wanting to fit all right just work with it a little bit keep working with it and there you go and he fits looks good and this is definitely going to be his his vehicle I like it a lot. This is definitely in flight mode. So he's flying through the air and shoo. And fire the missiles, which we will do right now. Fire the missiles. Stat. Kill the Joes. There you go. 
killing the Joes. And you just simply reload here. And there you go. You have your Mantis attack craft looking good. It's in flight mode right now. And he's going to go ahead and dive underwater, so we're going to angle these up. Ooh. And then we're going to go diving underwater. And now he's underwater and he's going to go grab, him, grab himself a Joe. So, there you go. Looks pretty good. I'm really happy with it. Looks good. I like the articulation in it. I like the hidden missiles. The guns in the front. The guns in the rear. Comes with a, a really good, solid figure. Um, as far as Lamprey's articulation does go, his head can swivel at a full 360 rotation if you needed to. With the helmet on and these plugged in, it's not going to do a full 360 rotation, but you also have an arm joint that goes up, down, full 360 rotation, single bend at the elbow, wrist rotation, no hinge joints. It does have a waist swivel and a diaphragm joint which is there but it's kind of hindered due to the uh, vest here so it cannot pivot side to side unless it's frozen on just mine maybe it does have t-jointed hips which go out and they do go forward and they do go back a little bit it does have double jointed knees and he's supposed to have ankle articulation but it is kind of hindered due to the molding of the the sculpting of the pants but it can swivel and a full 360 rotation. Um, he also does come with a... S oh, wait. No, he does not come with a sidearm. I thought he did. And I know it didn't fall out. So he does come with a a holster for a sidearm, but no sidearm. So you can put a sidearm in there, and it does close nicely. So there's that little bit of information. Um, not a big fan of the way that this helmet sits, to be honest with you, on this version of uh, Lamprey. Um, I always thought Lamprey as my hydrofoil driver, so I'm going to go grab the 25th anniversary version of Lamprey, and we'll do a little comparison. Oh, I got it now. Oh, of course. This is why a lot of things on G.I. Joe's need to be glued, but let's just take a put, quick look at uh, the comparisons here between both lampreys and these are pretty much the same just p different paint decos um, even down to the vest I actually prefer the blue version better there you go with the comparisons his helmet also sits a little bit better uh, this guy's helmet is just not wanting to I don't know what's going on here I have to use more pressure, but whatever. I think it looks fine. I'm probably going to repurpose this guy for someone else. So there's that, and there's the original Lamprey. So overall, I would say, with Guillotine still sitting in there, it's a really nice set. I definitely really like it. Um, I would highly re recommend it. Definitely two thumbs up. I think it's uh, got form. It's got function. It looks great. Um, really happy to have this a part of my collection now. I now have a repurposed vehicle for guillotine. And I think it works well. So um, as far as price point goes, like I said, this the a lot of the Rise of Cobra stuff, a lot of G.I. Joe vehicles are going up and up in price, uh, especially if they come complete now. That's what I've noticed um, throughout this summer and uh, beginning of this year is that a lot of the G.I. Joe Figures and vehicles are going up and up in price, especially a lot of the vintage uh, figures. Uh, modern figures are going up in price too, which is, um, you know, kind of a shame. But uh, you know, seeing as these these vehicles didn't come out that long ago, I could see if they came out 30 years ago, you know, maybe it could warrant that price point. But uh, because it's it's rarer to find, but I feel like Hasbro still has these molds, still has the tooling for this stuff. Um, I don't think it should really garnish that type of price point. That's just my opinion. I understand what the market is. I don't need a lecture on the market, but, or, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, I think this is a good set. 
I, I wouldn't really spend thirty dollars on this set to be honest with you. I can't recommend you spend that much money. Um, I mean, if you really want it, um, I would say you probably have a better off chance uh, waiting for a place like Big Boy Collectibles, or um, if you want to go to like a flea market or a local comic shop might have it. Um, you know, wait for toy shows, Comic Con, stuff like that, where they might drop them in price a little bit more. Seeing as eBay right now is just not a place for GI Joe collectors right now. For some reason, the market's just crazy at this point, at this date that I'm shooting this review. Um, so, with that being said, like I said, here's another two thumbs up. You got two thumbs up, so four thumbs up for this vehicle set. I really like it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hit that like button if you liked it. If you want to hit the thumbs down, that's cool too, but let me know how I can improve my content. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications, even if it doesn't work. You know, supposedly it's supposed to help me and it's supposed to help you so you can check out my reviews as soon as I review them. But that's pretty much it for me. Hope you enjoyed this review and I'll see you guys on the flip side.